Hey guys, it's like 6 20 in the morning now. I usually get up around 6 and I work on kind of my side hustle things and so if you've seen my courses on LinkedIn Learning or the YouTube videos, any of the content I make, uh, this is actually the time where I edit the content or for the cases writing, write the content. So like right now I'm working on a Python course for LinkedIn Learning. I'm really excited about it. Can't go into a ton of details, but usually I do like a script a day. So I'll write the script for a video um, and I'll do one of those per day and like a course is like 20 videos. And so it's like 20 days to create, but I don't do it every single day. And this isn't like a coding script. This is like a script that I will read while I record the content. And this script contains everything from what I'm gonna say to the code I might write that sort of thing and it's usually like 500 to a thousand words long it'll take me probably you know an hour or two to write that and research that and do that and then i continue on with my day all right so we just finished with the script it's about seven o'clock now so usually now i'll do my makeup and kind of get ready for the day have breakfast and have a relaxing morning. If you've ever worked at a software development company, you know food is often included. And so it's free and it's great and you show up to work and you get the free food and then you go to your desk and you work. Now, I've only had that one time. It was at Twitter and let me tell you, the Twitter breakfast is amazing. They have avocado toast Wednesday, acai bowl Thursday. They have the pastries on Friday. They have kimchi fried rice. They have, like if you've ever imagined like Garden of Eden, like when you walk into Whole Foods, you know that feeling that you're like, oh, there's so much fresh food here. Like this makes me feel really good. Well, this, this is 10 times that. I didn't actually work at Twitter. I was partnering with a company that had a good relationships with Twitter and that just happened to be my office for three months. But it did come with the perks of free lunch and breakfast. They had six to seven cafeterias. I don't think I found them all, but they had, they had an indulged cafeteria that had like candy and all this good stuff. But for breakfast, they would have literally every fruit you could think of they had strawberries blueberries um, pineapple apples peaches everything like all lined up and you could just like a fruit little salad bar type of thing they had eggs they had yogurt and granola they had bagels they were fresh on Monday but you could get them throughout the week they had like sometimes some salmon that you could put on the bagel along with some of those like caper type things. It was a beautiful place. <laughs> they would have like toast, like literally every breakfast food you can think of besides, they did not have bacon or sausage. I can't remember if they had sausage, but they didn't really have a lot of like meat products, but they, but they had eggs. It was just such a beautiful place. So after I like experienced that, I could no longer not eat breakfast in the morning. I don't know, I would have coffee maybe and that was kind of it. Uh, but let me tell you, this was a beautiful place. They also had a smoothie bar and it was, you could go up and they would make a smoothie. They had like a set that you could, you know, choose from or you could customize your smoothie, but completely free smoothies. And so I would have like a smoothie every day. But anyway, so now I can no longer have like no breakfast. They very much spoiled me and now I make a big breakfast pretty much every day. Some days I don't, but most times I do. So today's big breakfast includes two eggs. I also put some spinach in there just cause you kinda have to be a little healthy. I'll do a slice of toast, the cinnamon toast I've always been obsessed with. Uh, usually I'll cut up an apple and have that with it as well. If I have leftover like baked, like sometimes I'll bake some and rolls or even just like breakfast roll type things. I'll heat that up and have that with it. Sometimes I'll have orange juice. We are out and I'm not going into the pandemic to go and get some, but it's a pretty solid breakfast. All right, so this is the software developer breakfast. We got toast, apples, spinach, and eggs, and then some water too. And now I'm going to eat. All right, so it's about 9 a.m. ish between 9 and 9.30. 
and this is usually when I log on and start working for the full-time job, the full-time gig. I work at a small internet company, you've probably never heard of it, but we sell the internet to people and we sell a variety of other products too, but the thing I work on is an API that is for our internet product. If you don't know, API stands for Application Programming Interface, I have a video about it, but it's a way we can transfer information and data across different services and applications. Now before I can start doing the job, I have to log on to the VPN, the virtual private network. A VPN is like a special internet tunnel thing and it allows me to access our private cloud so I can have access to the things I need to in order to do my job. It also secures my network traffic so I don't have any hackers snooping in and seeing what I'm doing. Once I'm connected to the VPN, uh, now I know I'm all secure, I'll have access to the things I need to have access to that are in the private cloud. I go through our instant messaging platform and so many uh, people use Microsoft Teams or Slack or Discord or what you know there's lots of different ones we have one that we use that I go through that see any messages I missed over the weekend today's a Monday and respond to whatever I need to respond to usually I don't check this during the weekend because I don't want to. Our team has someone that's on call and so the on call person is in charge of if something happens to our API or our service, our product that we as a team work on, they can go and investigate it and then they'll pull in other people if they're needed. Since I was not on call, I do not have to do that. No working on the weekend for me. After I'm finished responding to all the messages, I'll go through emails and that sort of thing. And then I'll take a look at our dashboards to see if we had more traffic than we were expecting over the weekend, see if anything went down so then I kind of know what was going on. Then if I had an idea about the feature I was working on or the code I was trying to implement, I'll go and do that and implement that. But usually I'll look at our pull requests. And so these are other developers that want to merge a new feature into our code base. It could be fixing a bug, uh, adding a new feature, refractoring some code, and I'll go through those, pick one, and review that code. Maybe I'll leave some comments, maybe I'll approve it, we'll see. But I'll always read it. And those two things are most of the job. So I review code that other people have written, or I fix bugs and implement new features. Those are like the main tenets of what I do on a daily basis. After I've reviewed some code, usually that'll take an hour, so it depends how long, how big the code change is, but uh, usually I'll review one to two PRs, and then it'll be time for our stand-up meeting. Our scrum meeting, or our stand-up, this is a meeting we have every day. Uh, various teams will have it once a week, or three times a week, or something like that. We tend to have ours every day, and we review dashboards about how our API service is doing, are people getting error messages, are systems failing, how is all that looking? Then we'll go through the different tickets or pieces of work that people are working on, and see if there's any updates there, is there anything blocked? people is there something that someone has confusion on we'll kind of go through that a little bit uh, and this meeting is only 15 minutes and so there's not a whole lot of discussion but it's more like oh we'll take this offline or oh you know that's an interesting point let's discuss it in another format but any questions about the work or even the scope of work are sometimes brought up in this setting. At the end of Scrum, we look at what code there is to be reviewed just to remind us to review this code, get it merged in the code base, or leave comments if there's something that you want to change. After Scrum, I'll usually continue to do code reviews or continue working on the feature that I've picked up. time for lunch and I pretty much have the same thing for lunch every day now that we're in quarantine and so it's always a sandwich I do ham and cheese basic mayo mustard all of that good stuff and usually I'll have it with an apple cut up or some chips it's very basic it takes me about five minutes to make not reinventing the wheel here and sometimes I'll call a friend and talk with someone uh, during lunch and quarantine. Usually I would go to lunch with some friends at work, but now that is not the case. I usually take like an hour for lunch, um, and I would use that full hour when I was at work, but now I usually eat lunch in like 30 minutes or so. Sometimes I'll watch a show. I'm trying not to look at screens during lunch, but it's very difficult. Not working out well for me so far. Sometimes I'll make TikToks, and let me tell you, as a creator, Creator, I really like the platform. It is so easy to create content like for YouTube I have to film I have to edit 
like it's a multi-hour process to create just one piece of content whereas in TikTok I can make four or five of them in like an hour. The way I use TikTok or the way I create content on TikTok is I answer programming questions or I might make a funny video about something that has to do with programming. So if you have programming questions, comment on one of my TikTok videos what your question is and I'll try to make a video to answer it. Now keep in mind like the, the question you ask needs to be able to be answered in like 10 seconds and so don't go and ask me some super in-depth question about life or something that takes a long time to answer. If it's a question like what is your favorite programming language or what's your favorite framework to use, like those are pretty straightforward to answer or it could be like an opinion about a given piece of software or an IDE or what like tools and technologies I use. Uh, those are ones I tend to answer uh, because they're easier to make. When lunch is over, it's back to work. And before it's back to work, I just want to comment on how literally miserable it is today. So I'm really glad I didn't have to walk to work. We have some review comments and so I'm going to go and address those, either changing something and if I agree with the change or responding if maybe I don't understand it, uh, but basically going through and perfecting the PR for the changes that I'm trying to submit to the code base. And then I'll have my reviewer look at it again and then we'll see if we can get it merged today. All right, so I've made some changes to my pull request and now I'm gonna be using Postman to test the changes that I made. Uh, Postman is another development tool that you can use to test APIs. In case you're curious, I use VS Code uh, to write my code, but you could use IntelliJ or a different IDE. I'm all about the dark mode. All right, so now I am preparing for a presentation that I'm going to give to our team. We have these like weekly tech talk things that we've started where we present like new frameworks or new technologies that we might want to introduce into our product. If there's something that you would want to pitch to this or it might be a technology the team wants to investigate and you've decided that you've wanted to be the one to investigate it, you would go make a presentation about it and then present it. So I have my slides ready and I'm going to pitch this. We'll see how it goes. I met with a few different teams to compile research about this topic and so seeing there are a few other teams that use this particular technology or have upgraded to this specific version so I met with them to see how they're using the new features with this specific technology and has it benefited them, has it been worth it to upgrade or to change to this new service. Uh, sorry it's pretty broad here but you know provide but that's something that would be included that you would want to do um, not only like what's offered in this new technology but if there are other teams using it do they like it and these other teams that are using it you know they can help you integrate this into your product or your service and so it's a little bit more well tested within the organization if someone else is using it which is always good never want to be the guinea pig so I just finished the talk and it went good and it looks like there are some of them we're going to use. Uh, my new monitor came, and so I'm gonna go downstairs and get that later, but I want to enjoy some tea first because it was a lot of talking. I'll usually finish up in from like 3.30 to 5, 5.30. I'll work from over here. It's just nice to work from a different area, especially because the light gets really intense over there. So we come here and continue coding. Um. So that is it for this video. After this, I usually make dinner um, or work out. I'll probably make some more TikToks because those are so, it's crazy how easy they are to make that it just makes you wanna make more content. Tonight I'm also doing a Zoom call. I'm signing on to play Jackbox with some friends. I don't know if you guys play Jackbox. Fun for like 10 minutes and then it gets kind of pathetic when you realize you can't leave your house, but it does boost the mood. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting to see kind of what a software developer does during the day, what the job entails. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll see you soon. Happy coding.